Hello, welcome to Bible Guru Through the Bible. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse 18. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Many recent studies have demonstrated the benefit of drinking a small amount of wine on a daily basis. It's best had with food and in very small quantities. A slew of benefits, including reducing chance of death by cardiovascular disease and stroke, lower colon cancer risk, reduced or slowed development of brain degenerative diseases, and reduction of risk of diabetes, depression, and even cataracts are all associated with imbibing about two or three ounces of wine for ladies and about four or five ounces a day for men. Any amount more than that and the benefits disappear and a collection of negative impacts on your health ensue. Jesus and his disciples drank wine on at least two occasions. Both would have involved eating food as well. The problem is when you go beyond a few ounces, more than one glass of wine and your liver is no longer able to process the alcohol properly. Alcohol is a poison. It is toxic. More than a glass and the alcohol can actually enter your brain and change the way it functions, slowing response speed, reducing fine motor skills and negatively impacting higher level reasoning. For this reason, a person who's had more than one glass of wine or a beer or a shot of hard liquor is impaired to the point their driving skills are affected. With three or more glasses, most people are legally drunk. But the negative health impacts start once you go past one glass a day. Paul here is not talking about having one glass of wine a day or one or two glasses on a special occasion. He's talking about going past that Please see how serious the consequences are. It leads to debauchery. I had to look up what debauchery means. Synonyms include wantonness, profligacy, and wastefulness. Wastefulness I can understand, but the others don't help much. The Greek word is frightening. It is asotia which means unsavable. Have you ever had a friend who had a problem with drinking too much? Some people have a genetic predisposition to addiction. Once you are addicted, your brain is rewired so that breaking the addiction is extremely difficult. You can actually get to the point that the addiction takes over your life. I think maybe this is not limited to wine. Any unhealthy addiction tends to lead to debauchery. Some people are addicted to food, some to sex, some to being in love, some to entertainment. Any of these addictions can be potentially devastating. I think Paul is talking about a principle. The principle is replace the destructive addiction with a constructive addiction. Runners get addicted to a runner's high. Weightlifters get addicted to the pump. High academic achievers get addicted to A's. These are all, in most cases, healthy addictions. They replace unhealthy addictions. And the replacement Paul suggests is particularly fun. He suggests that we get addicted to spiritual music. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to each other in hymns and psalms and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. This seems much better than being filled with wine or any other intoxicant. Paul invites every believer to become a musician. In fact, he seems to associate spirituality and singing. To be clear, there is quite a plethora of garbage music available in the world. There was in Paul's time as well. That's not the kind of music Paul is advocating. He's recommending we start singing to one another 
and even speaking to one another in lyrics. I find myself doing this quite often. Someone asks, can we dot dot dot, how it ends doesn't matter. I love answering with the song. All things are possible. Doom doom. When someone describes an impossible situation, I can't help but thinking of the song. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. Almost the opposite of drunkenness. Music has a multitude of benefits. Musicians have 50% more white matter, the connected stuff in their brains. They are less prone to brain degenerative diseases. Singers, specifically, have a life benefit, living an average of two years longer than their peers. Musicians are less prone to violence and are better socially adjusted than the general population. Music seems to be a tonic, like small amounts of wine, but much better. The benefits do not diminish or reverse with increased amounts of music. And please notice, Paul is writing to a church, not a music school. He encourages everyone to make up new songs and sing to the Lord. Did you do this when you were a child? I did. I don't remember the songs I used to make up when I was four or five years old. They were probably rubbish. But I remember the joy of inventing songs to sing to God. Try it. Open your heart to receive his spirit, then sing back to him the joy that he places in your heart. One final thought. There are no other arts mentioned in the Bible that are part of the experience of heaven. There is, however, music, with everyone performing. We'll be musicians in eternity. We may as well get used to it now. And since many of us have extra time on our hands these days, why not fill that time with music? Music of praise to God. Prayer for today. Father, deliver me from destructive addictions. Fill me with your spirit. Make me a musical instrument playing praises and hymns and songs to you. Give me your song. In the name of your son, who sang songs with his disciples. Amen.